They said it couldn't be done. They said it was unfixable. They said it was only good for terrain. But I don't think so. I think this will be fairly easy to repair and get onto the tabletop. So hi, I'm Edscar, and this is a failed print of a Daimler armoured car by Khan3655, Think Tanker, Jeremy Khan, and Dewey Cat. I uh, honestly can't quite keep track of this model and how it's been remixed and passed between different designers. Um, it's obviously a popular vehicle, and I can agree with that, because it looks pretty cool. What isn't so cool is my failed print here, and you can see that the entire print failed on the same layer, but strangely part of the hull managed to recover and finish the print. You can just about see the failed layer and the recovered part of the hull, so I'm not sure why this bit survived and the others didn't. But the back end of the armoured car has come out pretty much fine, and there's sort of just this gap in the other side. A big gap, but I can fix that. One thing I can't fix, or at least not in a short time span, is the wheels and the tyres. Those are far more detailed, and so what I will do is set those to reprint and glue them on once the hull is repaired. I did notice, because of how the print progressed, that the wheels have this odd texture, as this was effectively an unsupported part of the model when the failure below killed the supports. These wheels could be used for a model stuck in the mud, which could be very interesting for a diorama or something. Maybe I'll use those later on. But for now, we have to fix up the hull, and for that I'll just use a big old lump of milliput, a two-part epoxy sculpting clay. You'll notice I did this with the turret fitted, and that's to make sure that the inside hole, the turret ring, will always fit the turret. I also wrapped the turret with cling film to prevent the milliput from sticking to it. With even more cling film acting as a barrier, I pressed the side of my knife against where I wanted the armour panels to be. This is only a rough shape for the vehicle at this point, I wasn't very heavy handed, as I wanted to shape this with sanding once the milliput had cured. And that's often the better way of shaping flat surfaces like this, is to sand it once the milliput is cured. When you're doing fine detail and, and that kind of thing, that's when you want to sculpt it when it's still soft. And the morning after, once the milliput had cured, I started to notice that the back end of the print wasn't quite as good as I first thought. Because of the big overhanging section where all of the supports had failed, each of the layer was bending slightly and so a lot of this back end is slightly skewed, making it quite difficult to be perfectly symmetrical. But I sanded away all of the armour panels for the central hull, wrapping my sandpaper around a wooden block to make sure all of these surfaces were flat, and I did manage to get a pretty good shape that probably won't be noticeable as not quite being right. Especially once that spare tyre is mounted to the side, and would you look at that, my replacement wheels are done already, and so I can quickly pop those on. The spare wheel I'll leave off for just a moment, as I want to paint on the basic camo pattern first. And we're ready to get stuck into painting now, prime the model in grey and I used my airbrush to create the basic camo pattern, and I can detail that up later. My airbrush setup isn't great, particularly when it comes to getting a good camera angle, but I used some white, some sand colour, and some light brown to create indistinct shapes. Uh, it's not quite what I had uh, intended, but it certainly is something I can work with. Now the camo is done, I can attach that spare wheel, and I gave the hull a quick scrub with sandpaper so that the wheel would be glued to the milliput and not to the paint. And next up is the predominant work going into the model is the weathering, the rust, and damage. I got my nastiest caked in super glue, uneven bristled brush, and started stippling around the model. First with black for kind of the backing of the damage, then with brown for rust and dirt, and lastly with metallic silvers, different types, for the bare metal exposed by that damage. This is all wildly unrealistic and over the top, but it looks cool, and that's all that's important. 
I also couldn't help myself but to do some edge highlighting with that bright silver and some messy pin washing with an ink wash. Which went down a little heavy, more of a recess wash than a true pin wash, but I didn't want to coat the entire model as that would darken it far more than I wanted. And after that it's just the minor details, the captured jerry can, wooden boxes and the tyres, although I didn't put any markings on this particular one and that's maybe something I have to come back to later. All told the paint scheme is very simple and probably took as long as fixing the model did. Which brings me to one last point, the discussions that came out when I posted pictures of the failed print. Many people said that it was good for terrain now to have a blown out vehicle, and that is a good option. I have several pieces of terrain made from failed prints. But for the extent of a three hour print for the wheels and all of maybe 15 minutes applying and sanding the milliput, it was almost a waste to reprint the whole thing again. Especially as my printer is broken and it would probably fail again. And that leads me to another common comment that I had from the cult of the angled print. When all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And in 3D printing, when all you know is angling prints, every issue looks like it's caused by incorrect angling. I argued with at least four different people who insisted outright that the failed print was somehow due to the angle that I printed it at. And when I told them that that straight up isn't the case, they all insisted that I was wrong. It is really unfortunate that we have this dominant culture of fake experts in 3D printing. People who see any slight connection to something they know and jump to conclusions and then pretend like they're helping people. No, this print did not fail because of the angle. It failed because my screen is cracked and I haven't replaced it yet. Well, my little armoured car is done now, ready for the tabletop. And it looks pretty good next to my British 8th Army models. I should probably paint the rest of them at some point. Let me know in the comments what you think about this model, especially if you know about the people involved with designing it, or how easy this repair was. There's still a little gnarly bit visible in that kind of recess there, but that should be where the exhaust is fitted. I might make something to add in later on, but I'm happy with it for the moment. So, with all that done, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.